Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you my favorite compact and portable wireless in-ear monitor system that I use for flying gigs, my solo gigs, filling gigs, and whenever I'm doing a gig where I just do not bring my in-ear monitor rack. This is part 404 in my in-ear monitor series. In the first video, I went over an absolute beginner's guide to in-ear monitors. In video two, I covered how to run your own in-ear monitors for your band at every show using a digital mixer and a splitter. And in video three, I show you a similar setup to this, but a little bit cheaper and a little bit more complicated. If you're interested in those, check the playlist by clicking up above or I'll leave links in the description down below. So here it is. This is all that I need for my portable in-ear monitor system. I have my standard Sennheiser EW300 in-ear monitor receiver, and I also have this Sennheiser SKP XLR transmitter, which is normally plugged into a microphone. You'll see it used for things like interviews and stuff like that. I've been using this rig for over a year and a half now, and it has not failed me. And it's got great range on it too. I've even had it work uh, three floors up. I had a gig like downstairs in this place, and three floors up, I could still hear my in-ears. It was pretty crazy. This is the setup that I use when I don't want to take my rack apart. Like I said, I have the Sennheiser system and it's in my rack, which I went over in video two. If ever I'm doing a gig where, I, where I'm not bringing that rack, I, it's just a pain to unrack, bring it somewhere else and then re-rack it again. It's been super helpful for me, so I figured I would share the information in case this is something that would be helpful for you. So who's this for and who's it not for? So first, who this video is not for. If you play in just like one band, that's it. You never do like a solo set or a, just a duo set. You never fill in with other bands. You don't travel to gigs and not bring your rack. If your in-ear monitor system that you have lives in a rack and it's already hooked up and ready to go and that's the only time you ever use it, this probably isn't the video for you and you can survive with just your setup. Also, this video is not for you if you 100% need your in-ear monitor systems to be in stereo. This is a mono setup and I've never had a problem with that and I usually run my in-ears in mono anyways. This is for you if you're looking for any sort of portable in-ear monitor rig for travel, filling gigs or whatever. Especially for travel, this thing can live in your backpack or even your pockets and you don't have to put it in your checked bag. This is also for you if you already own a Sennheiser EW300 in your monitor series, either generation two, three, or four, this is a perfect setup because you already have half of what you need and you can get this transmitter pretty cheap, especially used, you can get it really cheap. And it's also for you if you're out of space in your in-ear monitor rack, you already have a rack put up, but you still need another in-ear monitor system for another musician or something like that. So before I bought this, I actually emailed Sennheiser and this is what they told me about this. So it appears that any of these will work with any of the Sennheiser in-ear monitor receivers as long as they're set to the same frequency manually and then we change a few settings. So super cool. So how do you set this up? So the setup is pretty easy. So with a normal in-ear monitor system, you scan and sync. However, with this, you have to do it manually. It just takes a few more steps. So first, a few settings on your receiver. Go to mode and set it to focus instead of stereo. Then go to advanced and then pilot tone and set that to inactive. I don't understand the pilot tone completely or in depth. This is what I found is doing a quick Google search. Um, it's just some sort of way for the receiver to understand if the transmitter is working or something. But we won't, don't want that because we're doing this a little bit differently than a standard in-ear monitor system and it doesn't work if the pilot tone is on. So now scan for the cleanest frequency with your receiver, just like you normally do. You don't have to worry about the group and the channel name. Just remember what frequency it finds. So now on the SKP transmitter, press set. Scroll to advanced, go to tune, and then set that manually to the same frequency. And we're not done yet, just a few more things to set up. Go back to the main menu, go back to advance, set the pilot tone here also to an inactive. And if you have the 300 or the 500 series of the of SKP, set phantom power to inactive because having it active drains the batteries a lot faster and you don't need phantom power for this. Now last step in the main menu, scroll to the sensitivity. I have mine set at negative 42. That's really low, but it seemed to work best for, for my setup with this rig. I would turn yours down to at least negative 30 and just see what works best for you, just depending on your setup. I just plug it into whatever is transmitting you and in your monitor mix and you're good to go. So how I personally use this setup. I use this in a number of ways. The four most common ways are one for travel gigs. I have this in a case with my HX stomp, which is in my backpack, uh, which is my carry on for a flight, which fits under the seat in front of you. So uh, I never have to check it and have to worry about losing it. For my solo looping set, I have it coming out of my monitor mix of my TC Helicon Voice Life 3, which is like the brain of, of my looper setup. In one of my bands, my singer brings his Behringer XR16 and we all plug into that. So I just plug into the aux out of one of those. And one of my bands, I have this set up in the back of my rack, which I plug my instruments in here. And then the sound guy plugs into these. It's a custom rack that I got built. And I plug my SKP transmitter here. And it's already connected to my interface. And I have my in-ear monitor mix set up in Ableton. Um, shameless promotion. If you want to check out that band, click the link up above. So a couple accessories that help you for this. First thing I recommend is getting cables that work for this. An XLR, a quarter inch and an eighth inch. Just depends on your setup. So 
I have a short XLR cable. When I plug into my Singer's XR16, it can plug into aux 3, which has my monitor mix, but it blocks some of the other inputs and other aux channels. So I just have like a three foot cable that keeps that from getting tangled up. It's just a standard XLR cable. With my TC Helicon looping setup, my monitor mix comes out of the eighth inch output. So I have a small male eighth inch to male XLR cable that I use in order to make that work. Also with one of my bands, we used to use the Behringer X12 and that came out of a quarter inch output. So I also have a male quarter inch to male XLR cable as well. I don't need it anymore because I don't use that setup. But having all three cable options, the eighth inch, quarter inch and XLR is helpful. To also get a mini mixer. I use this one by Rolls with one group that I play when we travel because we use backing tracks and the way that we have our system set up is that we all get a click track sent to us separately from an iPad. This way I get a full mix from the sound guy in input one and then the click track into input two and I can control them individually. And sometimes I can plug my vocals in input three and then have control over input one is full mix, input two is click, input three is vocals, which is nice. I also recommend getting an attenuator. If you're getting a signal that is way too hot, like that one I just mentioned, the click track is so loud and I need this attenuator. Um, it's helpful for that reason. Just a bonus tip. If you have the Sennheiser EW300 G4 series, you can buy the G3 and it works with that too. I actually did that because a guy was selling one on Reverb for super cheap. And when I bought the EW300s, I got the two receivers to run two separate mono mixes. So now I have two travel in your monitor rigs. One of them's the G4 SKP and the other one's the G3 SKP. They both work with the G4. So my understanding is any of the Sennheiser SKPs will work with your EW300 in your monitors as long as they're set in the same frequency range. So mine is 470 to 518 or something like that. So I have to get an SKP that transmits in that frequency range. If I got one that transmits on like 518 to 580 or something like that, it wouldn't work. But the generations of models don't seem to matter, at least with the G4 and the G3. Those are those work completely fine with each other. I'm almost positive that I read it would also work with the G2 series. I just can't 100% confirm that, but I can confirm G3 and G4. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the in-ear monitor series. Links are in the description down below if you're interested in getting one of these for yourself or if you're interested in watching the other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. I'm trying to do more videos now lately, especially because of the quarantine and lockdown and all that and the fact that I'm not gigging or traveling as much as I normally do, especially in the summer. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. It's Scott Ewell Music. If you didn't watch the other three videos, you can watch my playlist for those as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching.